I'm Leonard Marks from UCLA, and I would like to tell you about how we've moved from targeted prostate biopsy, which is now quite well established, to focal laser ablation of prostate cancer. We believe that this can be done in a clinic setting under local anesthesia and remain a urological procedure. The work began in late 2008 with the formation of a multidisciplinary group, including a radiologist, a urologist, a pathologist, and a biomedical engineer, as well as a dedicated clinical research coordinator. By the year 2016, we had done several thousand of these procedures and we were able to report in the journal Cancer of men who had been studied with targeted prostate biopsy. We established that targeting is better than blind biopsy. Therefore, our next line of thinking was that we would use our expertise with targeted prostate biopsy to move forward to focal therapy. If we can see these tumors, if we can get our arms around them, characterize them, biopsy them, follow them, why not treat them where they lay? We now understand much better how the different components of multiparametric MRI diagnose and characterize cancers in the prostate. Of the various focal therapy options, we like laser therapy, focal laser ablation, because it has the potential for being done under local anesthesia in a clinic setting and because it's very precise. Focal ablation of prostate tissue was first done in an animal model in 1993. Doctors in Canada subsequently showed that this was feasible in man. And then in 2013, Odo and Egner from the University of Chicago reported a small series of patients treated with focal laser ablation inside an MRI unit, showing that lesions identified on MRI could be treated under direct MRI guidance and monitored with MR thermography, resulting in a controlled zone of tissue ablation within the prostate. Encouraged by these early works and the successes related thereto, we formed a second research group and we performed our own preclinical laser studies in a research MRI unit testing tumor localization and MR thermometry. The laser therapy device is based off an existing FDA approved device called the Visualay system. This is a 980 nanometer 15 watt laser that's water-cooled and delivers laser energy to gently heat prostate tissue while keeping the surrounding tissue intact. Unlike any previous study ever performed, we inserted thermal probes into the prostate so we could directly monitor temperatures during treatment. And we observed the temperature changes to be very well confined to the treatment zone here. MRI results obtained immediately after these procedures revealed a circumscribed, confined, well-demarcated zone of ablation as intended. No man experienced any serious adverse events or disturbances in urinary or sexual function, and the thermal probes turned out to be an excellent method for monitoring temperature change within the prostate. Unfortunately, the MRI is uh, cumbersome because the men have to be in a uh, small donut in order to be treated and it's a much more expensive technique. So we reasoned that if we could replace MR thermometry with the thermal probes, and if we could replace direct MR visualization of the lesion with MR ultrasound fusion, as we had done for several thousand biopsies, then we should be able to do this procedure in our clinic. And the fixed arm of the Artemis device appeared to provide a stable platform to hold the laser in position and allow this to be done under local anesthesia in a clinic setting. One problem with performing focal laser ablation in our clinic, it had never been done before. So we obtained a permit from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, an investigational device exemption, to treat a series of patients in our clinic. And so in procedure room four of the UCLA Urology Clinic, we treated our first patient. Watch as engineer Alan Priester describes this novel treatment method. When targeted prostate biopsy is performed, each core location is recorded in 3D for retrospective review. 
Because we are able to map positive and negative core locations back onto the MRI, treatment margins can be refined for each patient. This personalized plan, based on the patient's most recent targeted biopsy, is generated by custom software developed at UCLA. The expected volume of consecutive laser treatments is overlaid on the prostate and tumor regions. At least one probe is placed adjacent to the rectal wall to ensure that the temperature there stays under 42 degrees Celsius. A dual lumen catheter contains a channel for the laser fiber as well as two outer channels that allow for circulation of coolant. This catheter is inserted into the target location under ultrasound guidance. The laser fiber is then inserted and locked into place. An additional thermal probe is inserted parallel to the laser fiber. Ten men receive focal laser ablation in the clinic according to a strict protocol, and the results on the post-treatment MRI were very similar to those obtained in bore. While biopsy results are still pending, no serious adverse events were encountered, and the clinic procedure appeared safe and feasible in this phase one study. So in conclusion, what we've shown here is the potential to move from targeted prostate biopsy, which is now well established, to focal laser ablation of prostate cancer, and moreover, that this can be done under local anesthesia in a clinic setting.